because they could be gotten at a pretty good price. And um, some of these old rack effects from the 80s and 90s, and even the ones that they're making to the present day, have a ton of amazing stuff inside of them. And um, you could really come up with your own sound by uh, layering them, sending them into each other, making multi effects. And um, there's a certain magic to them. You know, plugins, there's a million great plugins, and I use a ton of them. I especially think that, you know, if you're in the box, still for delay, like this, the stuff from Sound Toys is, is some of the best stuff out there. Um, the Echo Boy models a whole bunch of the analog and digital delays of the past, and it does a really good job at it, especially at modeling the front end of it, where you, uh, where you plug in and where you saturate the sound. And this is something I'll always sell to you guys as something that you need to incorporate is, you know, if whether or not you're recording it with filtering and, and, and driving it and giving it some color, the saturation plugins are some of the most important ones to have. And, um, the front end of the old gear, like the Space Echo and the Echo Plex and the pedals like the Memory Man and all the pedals that are modeled and all the delays that are modeled in the Echo Boy, one of the things that they bring with it is not just the style of delay, but you can drive the saturation and drive the input. So that would be a really cool one for getting the sound of a whole bunch of stuff. But then you know that the extra 10% comes from having the real thing. And the digital delays of the past have a have converter technology that's pretty old school so they sound kind of grimy but they were designed at a time when that was the peak technology by great engineers so this stuff can sound very cool um well omer maybe we'll get to that uh right now actually so looking at the rack i kind of can't see it over here but that's all good nick am i pinned uh do you have the the two two mafas pinned <laughs> uh anyway from the top, we see here, we have a Yamaha SPX90. I wonder if I could do my zoom zoom. It's already there. All right, so the Yamaha SPX90 was a classic. It was something that every studio had and every studio still has. Uh, they're still $200 and under, very often $100. And a big part of that is because they sold millions of them. I, I exaggerate, but they really came up with a technology of multi effects that was affordable that could compete with some of like the higher end stuff like the Eventides and they sounded great and they have a lot of great uh, bits to them. So you, it, you need a little bit of patience when you're trying to turn something from the lowest setting to the highest setting because all you have are these arrows and that could take you a while. But if we take, if we want to hear what some of the uh, reverb sound like, we have to come up with a maybe some kind of synth sound to trigger. It's not a synth. All right, cool. So we get a stab going. Right, so this is a matter of having something going. Um, And uh, maybe just to make this a little bit less monotonous. So that's just like a, a good idea of the most basic starting point of this thing.
All right, so that was a 90 second reverb that would have just kept carrying on. So it has enough power to do something like that, which is really good because some things are limited into into the the computer chips of the old days having you know a, a long a long delay time or a long reverb time so just to go through this would be the room girl vocal verb plate And even, you know, that one's especially metallic because it's the plate verb, but um, this box itself is very metallic sounding. It can add, it has a certain Yamaha metal sound that, that is transcends throughout a lot of their pieces. The Eventide does that as well. It can make something sound uh, very metallic in a good way. I just routed through the patch bay. I mean, basically I did, I turned up aux one and yeah, <laughs> I plugged this in before. Plug this in before you got here. I went aux one on the mixing board is routed into the Yamaha now uh, and probably going forward for the next couple of months and then returning on another part on the console over here. So I just turn up aux one to get to that. Uh, let's see. 